Today, I'm going to be showing you some tricks that you can do with your calculator to get more marks in your exams. Now, a quick disclaimer, while these tricks help you get the answers, it's still crucial that you know how to do the working out to get those answers. Anyway, enough waffling, let's get on with it. The first trick I want to show you is how you can store answers. For example, in this question, we are asked to find theta. As you can see, it is a horrible number. We don't want to put this into our calculator again. Instead, if you press on and press answer, notice this just gives us our whole answer back again. So now when we need to reuse the value of theta in later parts of the question, instead of writing down the whole thing, we can just press the answer key on our calculator and this will use theta. So here we worked out the area using that. What's even better is that you can actually permanently store values in your calculator. Let's say for whatever reason you want to use this value later on. Well, all you need to do is press store and then it's a bit hard to see, but the red letters, you can choose one of those red letters to assign it to. So as you can see, we've assigned it to A. Now, how do we bring back the letter A? Simple, press alpha, then press the A button. As you can see, it's given us back our number. And now you can do whatever calculations you want to your number. Let's say you want to raise it to the power of minus one. Here you go. And as you can see, our value of A is still same, staying the same. Now, since I am so generous, I'll give you guys a little bonus. Here's how you view your stored values. First, press shift, then the store button again. And as you can see, here's a table showing every value that we've stored on our calculator. Now, I hope none of you guys would even consider cheating. However, as you can imagine, this can be used to help people cheat. This is why before your exam, they require you to clear your calculator's memory. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. First, we press shift, then we press the number nine as it says reset, and then press two for memory, then equals, and finally, you press the AC key, and there you go, it's all cleared. Now, if you go and see your stored values, you'll see they've all been reset to the default zero. The next thing I'll show you is how you can check your answers for questions like this, where you're told to solve for X. So here we have our two values of x. How can we check it's correct? I'll show you how you can do this with x equals minus six. First, we write minus six into our calculator, then store it to any letter we want. We'll choose a for this. Then if x equals minus six is the correct answer, then if we put it into our original equation, it should give us the right value. So we're gonna do two minus x squared, but instead replace it with a over one plus three a and see if that's equal to two, and yes it is. So that's the correct answer. You can also check x equals zero is a correct answer by doing the same thing, but with x equals zero instead of minus six. The next thing I'll show you is how to find the prime factors of a number. Let's say we wanna find the prime factors of 720. Well, all you need to do is press shift, then look for the fact button, press it, and here you go, there's the prime factors. The next thing I'll show you is how you can rationalize thirds with your calculator. This one's really easy. You just type it into your calculator, then press the equal button and here you go, there's the rationalized version. This next trick is involving the topic of ratios, which is something I personally struggled with. So let's say you want to write the ratio 34 to 7 in the form 2 to x. Well, to do this with your calculator, you first press the menu button, then look at the number 4. Either you can press it or scroll to the fourth menu, which says ratio. Now we want our ratio in the form c to x, where x is the thing we want to find. So we press number two. Now we just type in our ratio, which is 34 to seven equals two to x, because that's how we want it. And then it gives us x, which is seven over 17. So our answer is two to seven over 17. Now I'll show you how to convert a fraction into a mixed number. Let's say you have 87 over two. To convert it to a mixed number, put shift, then press the SD key. As you can see, here it is. Now, if you press the SD key twice, it'll give you back the fraction. Finally, I'll show you how you can convert recurring decimals to a fraction. So to write a recurring decimal, we press shift and then look for the button, which is a square with a dot on top. Here, we just write in our recurring decimal. So we have 2.52 recurring. Press equals and it will just give it you as a fraction. Now, not all calculators have this recurring decimal button. So if you don't have it on your calculator, then all you need to do is just spam a bunch of times the number you want to be recurred. And as you press equal, it'll still give you the same answer. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.